Hi, welcome to Bit Science. Whether you are a beginner or an experienced MySQL user, you are in the right place to learn more about data types in MySQL. We will be exploring various data types that are available in MySQL and how to choose the right types for your column. First, we will discuss numerical data types such as integer, float, double, and decimal, which are used to store numeric value. Next, we will move on to date and time data types like date, time, date, time, timestamp, which are used to store date and time values. After that, we will take a look at string data types like char, var, char, text, blob, which are used to store character string values. We will also explore spatial data types such as point, line, polygon, which are used to store geographical information. Then we'll talk about JSON data type which is used to store JSON documents in the MySQL. We'll also cover data type default value, which specify default value for column if no value is specified during insertion. We will then discuss data type storage requirement, which specify amount of storage required for different data types. We'll take a look closer to numerical data types and their storage requirements. We'll also touch on using data types from other database engine which allows you to use data types from other database engine in MySQL. Finally, we will talk about where and not equal comparison operator, which are used to compare value in MySQL. By the end of this video, you will have a good understanding of different data types in MySQL and how to choose the right type of your column. So let's dive in. Namaste. Welcome to Bit Science. Unlock the secrets of life and technology with our comprehensive biology and computer science education. MySQL is a widely used relational database management system that offers a variety of data types to store and manage data. These data types are classified in two different categories, including numeric, date and time, string, spatia, and JSON data types. Let's understand each data type in brief. Numerical data types. MySQL support both exact and approximate numerical data types. Exact numerical data types include integer, small int, tiny int, decimal, numeric. Approximate numeric data types includes float, real, double precision. Date and time data types. MySQL support various data types to represent date and time value. These date and time include date, time, date, time, timestamp, and year. String data types. MySQL support various data types includes cache, varchar, binary, var binary, blob, tiny blob, medium, and long blob. Char and var are used to represent character string of fixed and variable length, respectively. Binary and var binary are used to represent binary string of fixed and variable length. Blob, tiny blob, medium blob, and long blob are used to represent binary large object of various sizes. Spatial data types. MySQL supports spatial data types, which enables the storage of spatial data types such as points, lines, polygon. These data types include geometric point, line string, polygon, multipoint, multi-line string, and multi-polygon. JSON data types. MySQL also supports JSON data types, which is used to store JSON, which is JavaScript object notation documents. The JSON data type enables efficient storage and retrieval of JSON documents. The next is bit data type. The MySQL supports the bit data type, which is used to store bit value. The bit data type is support for MyIAM, memory, InnoDB, NDB tables. Understanding the various data type in MySQL is essential to creating efficient and effective database tables. By selecting the appropriate data type for each column in your table, you can ensure that your database is both efficient and scalable. MySQL has specific storage requirements for each data type that is used in the database. It is important to understand these requirements when creating a tables or defining a column in a table. First, let's talk about numeric data types. The storage size of the integer data type depends on the range value it can represent. The tiny int data type can store value from minus 128 to 127 and takes up one byte of storage. The small int data type can store 
values from minus three two seven six eight to three two seven six seven and takes up two bytes of storage. The medium mint data type can store value from minus eight three eight eight six zero eight to eight three eight eight six zero seven and takes up three byte of storage. The int data type can store value from minus this value to positive this value and takes up four bytes of storage. Finally, the big int data type can store value from the large minus this value to positive this value and takes up eight bytes of storage. The storage size of the floating point data type depends on the precision of the values stored. The float data type takes up four bytes of storage and has precision of 23 bits. The double data type takes up eight bytes of storage and has precision of 53 bits. The D8 data type stores it did in the format of YYY, MM and DD. YY means years, month and days and takes up three bytes of storage. The date time date types stores it date and time in the format of the same year, month, date and the hour, minute and second and takes up eight bytes of storage. The timestamp date type also stores eight date and time but only up to range from since 1970 of January 1st to 2013 of January 19th and takes up four bytes of storage. So the range of this date and time have limited range. So you cannot go beyond that. The cat data types stores fixed length character strings and takes up many bytes as length of the string. For example, cat 10, if you say, will take up 10 bytes of storage. Whereas the where cat data type stores variable length character strings and takes up only the storage need for the string values plus one or two bytes to the record the length of the string. Finally, let's talk about blob and text data types. These data types are used for storing large amount of data, such as image, if you want to use that image and store that, or long text strings. The storage size of these data types depends on the size of data being stored. In conclusion, understanding the storage requirement of each data type in MySQL is important when designing and creating tables. It can help you optimize storage usage and ensure that your database runs efficiently. Objects are instance of class and each object has its own unique set of property can perform certain action or methods. In this context, we have a class called geometry, which is an abstract class. This means that it cannot be directly instantiated, but rather it serves a base class for other classes. There are other classes that inherit from geometry and are instantiable, meaning that object can be created from them. These classes are limited to representing 0, 1 or 2 dimensional geometric object that exist in 2 dimensional coordinate space. For example, the point class represents 0 dimensional object. The line class represents 1 dimensional object like a line. And the polygon class represent two dimensional object like rectangle. There are also class called geometry collection that represent collection of our other geometries. For example, a multi point can represent a collection of points and a multi line string can represent a collection of lines. Lastly, there are some abstract class like geometry, curves, surface, multi curve, multi surface, which cannot be directly instantiated but serve as a base class for other classes. Defines a set of method that their subclass can use. Let's see how we can represent this data. Let me open MySQL. Before we dive into specifics of each data types, let's have a brief overview what spatial data types are. Simply put, spatial data types are data types that allows us to store geographic data in our database. They are designed to represent the location and shape of object on Earth's surface. Spatial data types provide us with the efficient way to store, retrieve spatial data. In programming, a class is like a blueprint that describes the property and behavior of object. Overall, these classes and their inheritance hierarchy are used to represent and manipulate geometries in the two-dimensional coordinate system. The two main spatial data types in MySQL are point and polygon. The point data type represents a single point in space defined by its latitude and longitude coordinates. For example, the coordinates of Eiffel Tower in Paris, France could be represented as a point data type. Point 48.8584, 2.2 point 
2945. Well known binary is a binary format used for exchanging geometric data. It represents geometry as a sequence of bytes. For example, WKB value for this number is represented by 20 byte in hexadecimal format. The polygon data type represents a closed shape made up of series of points. It is defined by its vertices, which are orders in clockwise or counterclockwise. For example, a rectangle could be represented as a polygon data type. Let's set this set at the rate. This is the variable we are assigning poly polygon vertices. One vertice is like this, you have to write with spaces. Another is having a comma within two braces of our two vertices. If you would like to represent this, let's write the query for this. Select ST area for this ST geometry form text. This geom form text is a function which will convert your binary representation to text format. In addition to point and polygon, MySQL also supports other spatial data such as line string, multipoint, and multipolygon. MySQL provides a number of functions for working with spatial data. For example, SG distance peer function can be used to calculate the distance between two points on a earth surface using Eversheim formula. Here's an example of how you might use this function to find the distance between Eiffel Tower and the Gate of Wall of China. Select ST distance pairs the function in the bracket we have to write two point for the comparison point one is the Eiffel Tower another point is for gate wall of China this would return the distance between the two point in meters multipoint is spatial data type that represents collection of points in space it is similar to point data type, but it can store multiple point instead of just one the syntax for creating a multipoint column is as follows right creating a table called example 1 with id as a primary key and the second value is point of multipoint data type. If you are describing this table, you will see a detailed data type of this table. Here is an example how you can insert data into a multipoint call. Insert into example 1 values for an stgeom form text. We have to again use the same function to change the representation. This will insert a row with the id of 1 and 3 points with the coordinates. Multi-line string is a spatial data that represents collection of lines in space. It is similar to a line string data type, but it can store multiple lines instead of just one. The syntax of creating a multi-line string column is for create table example id is one. The second value is multiple line of multi-line string. This would look like if you describe this table. Here an example how we can create data into multi-line string column set. We are multiplying insert into example values are in the same function we are going to use. This will insert a row with an ID of one and two lines with the coordinates. Multipolygon is special data type that represents collection of polygon in space. It is similar to polygon data type, but it can store multiple polygons instead of just one. The syntax for creating multipolygon column is follows. We are going to create a table again. Here is the example how you can insert into multi-polygon column. We are going to set multi-poly to represent multi-polygon. We are going to add two polygons within the multi-polygon. This is how you are going to insert this into multi-polygon table. Insert into example 4 values. This will insert a row with a id of 1 and two polygons. Geometry collection is a special data type that represents collection of different spatial objects such as points, lines, polygons. The syntax for creating geometric columns is we are going to set first the geometry. Geometry collection will have point line string as well. You can also add polygon. We are using this string. Let's create table. This is how you are going to create this table. This would look like if you describe this table. To insert a geometry collection value into geom column, you use the WKT. Insert into example 5. ID of this. We are adding the values of this which we have set. This will insert a row with ID 1 and 3 different coordinates. One would be point. Second is also point. Third is line string. In summary, the spatial data in MySQL allows you to work with geographical information and perform complex spatial operations. By using this data type and function, you can build powerful applications and make use of location-based data. So let's create some table called any. So this is class, which will consist of id as int. So first column is about int. We can have class name or simply name. Name can have tiny text or text for that i am going to use uh, medium text for text you don't need to give any range then next we can use section which section is long we can use tiny text and next we can have strength of the class 
can be an integer we can use tiny int create red date date time to store this value we can about status and this is going to be boolean which will consist of true or false value this also is equivalent to tiny int i guess tiny int uh, for strength we should increase that we can use medium int here we can use text to increase that class teacher theme also can be a text that's enough let's create this let's see okay it has been created insert into class first is id one name that says s-i-n-c-i science you have to write text and within the double quote name section can be tiny text i'm writing a section writing a character next we have strength strength can be any numbers as 60 60 people's create date also get it will follow a format of your date which month the day days and the year then we have status you can say true so class teacher can be any any name okay one thing we have missed is values okay we have to write the time as well so time is not mentioned over here so what we can use is we can use a now function to uh, get the time as well so the now is one of the function which will get you system time so let's see what we have inserted so we have one row record updated let's insert some more rows and check different value for each columns so if you see data you will get a good number of data so you can see the status one or zero both value has been recorded so how to alter the table write alter table table name plus say add the data type so i want to add the uh, average average marks or something like that so which will have float or double value so we have average all are null right now because whenever you create new will be null updated now you need to insert okay you can see this class been added so we have double value as well if i want to add enum here when you are writing enum you need to provide all your data here within the packet so sunday you can say monday tuesday then wednesday friday saturday that's it you alter yeah so we are able to add so if you want to see you will get null right now but when you are going to insert that you have to provide uh, any of these value here so either you write sunday then also you will able to insert if you write one that also will be correct so what if if you write uh, other than these enum functions let's say you want to add insert today so it says data truncated for column v hope you are able to understand so far so let's see what are the json data so if i want to add editor a new data type called json if you know or not json is a different structure altogether it consists of key value pair of everything let's say i'm going to say web object is a json data so if you see json is null now but how to insert a json value and store in this json so yeah we are able to store if by if you see it will just represent the same as a string but but the representation this json this whole thing is quite different mysql allows you to specify default values for columns in your tables if a row is inserted into a table and no value is specified for that column that has default value then mysql will use the default value for that column you can set the default value for column when you create the table or you can alter the table later to set the default value as well default is a constraint it's not a column we are adding constraints constraint can be uh, many way it can be check constraint it can be default one of that or uh, is null or not null those constraint you can also add set i am going to add let's say so you have to 
write the value which is represent to the data type you cannot write anything what do you want to set i am going to set default we can use uh, this strength and set default to a minimum number so at least a class should start with 20 number of strength right okay. i'm going to set if this value always you can use 00, zero. the created data has been set boolean also can be set we have a status which we are going to set to true always then we can use average marks also which we can use uh, 33 which is a passing marks so let's set c in working we are going to insert one more time but this time we are not going to give any value now see it has been inserted my squid provides an easy way to import table definition from other database system using mapping of data types for instance bool and boolean types from other vendor are mapped to tinyint in my squid similarly character varying is mapped to varchar and numeric is mapped to decimal other mappings include float 4 to float and float 8 to double, int 1 to tiny int, int 2 to small int, int 3 to medium int, int 4 to int, int 8 to big int, long var binary to medium block, long var care to medium text, long to medium text and middle int to medium int. By using these mapping, it becomes easier to reuse code written for SQL implementation from other vendors. Just think about when you want to migrate something from older SQL database to MySQL, this identification will be helpful to migrate your data tables. This makes it convenient for developer to work with different database system without worrying about compatibility issues. MySQL provides a wide range of comparison function and operators that can be used to compare different values in database. These include simple operations such as equal sign and as than and as well as more complex functions such as like operator and in functions. The equal operator is used to compare two values for equality. For example, the expression x equals to y returns true if x is equals to y and false otherwise. It can be used with all data types in MySQL. The NOT operator is used to compare two values in equality. For example, the expression x not equals to y returns true if x is not equals to y and false otherwise. The null safe equal operator is used to compare two values for, for equality, but it treats null values as equal. The less than operator is used to compare two values to see if the left hand value is less than the right hand value. The greater than operator is used to compare two values to see if the left hand value is greater than the right hand values. As same as the less than or equals to operator is used to compare two values is C left hand value is less than the right hand value. The greater than or equal operator is also in similar case where you compare two values see if the left hand value is greater than the equal to the right hand value equal also it checks the e, like operator is used to match patterns and strings it is often used with wildcard characters such as ampersand and underscore for example the expression name like joe ampersand is returns all names that start with joe the in operator used to compare a value with a list of values. For example, expression color in red, green, blue. It turns true if the color is either red, green or blue. The not operator used to negate a comparison. For example, the, ex the expression not x equals y. It turns true if x is not equals to y and false otherwise. In MySQL, there are five types of SQL commands that you can use to interact with database. These are DDL, DQL, DML, TCL, TCL. Let's start by understanding what each of these commands means and how they differ from each other. DDL stands for Data Definition Language. 
which is used to define and modify structure of database object such as tables, indices, and constraints. DDL commands include create, alter, rename, truncate, and drop. For example, you can create a new table in MySQL using create table command. DML stands for Data Manipulation Language, which is used to insert, update, delete data from the database. DML commands include insert, update, delete, and merge. For example, you can see insert a new row into a table using insert into command. DCL stands for Transaction Control Language, which is used to manage and transaction the database. DCL commands include like commit, roll back, say point. For example, you can commit or roll back a transition using the commit or roll back command. DQL stands for data query language, which is used to retrieve data from database. The select command is the only DQL command in MySQL. DCL stands for data control language, which is used to manage the security and access of the database. DCL commands include grant, revoke, for example, you can grant or revoke permission to a user using the grant or revoke command. In conclusion, understanding the different type of SQL commands in MySQL is essential for managing and manipulating data in database. DDL, DQL, DML, DCL, and TCL all serve different purposes, and it is important to use them appropriately for the efficient and effective database management. Hopefully, this video has helped you understanding these concepts a little better. If you have any question or comment, feel free to leave them down below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more programming videos.